joined here in our Sky News Centre by Michelle Rowland, of course the uh, Assistant uh, Shadow Minister for Communications, also in Canberra by Liberal MP Peter Hendy. And I will start with you. Uh, this line opened for business, that was what we heard from Tony Abbott on election night. The first major hurdle, though, the first uh, major investment opportunity that's come across Joe Hockey's desk and it's been given the kibosh. Well, I don't, I don't know it was the first. As you heard from the Treasurer, there's been 131 um, applications of which um, 130 were approved. Um, I, I have a rural seat myself, Eden Monero. Um, uh, I know that although it hasn't got a lot of grain growing areas, I know that this has been a big issue in the, in the bush. I know that there were genuine concerns amongst grain growers on the eastern coast uh, that there was a threat to competition. And, um, and the Treasurer made the point that the uh, industry was, uh, has been undergoing over the last three or four years significant reform. Um, and so while that was being bedded down, he, he believed that it was against the national interest to proceed with this takeover. But when you talk about against competition, Grain Corp does have this monopoly already. It's in Australian hands. What's the difference between a monopoly in Australian hands versus that in US hands? It's still a private company. The Australian government wouldn't have had any control over it anyway. Well, well, ADM, or as Archer Daniel Midland, as you might know, is a significant multinational and it has uh, its fingers in a lot of pots in the supply chain through a whole lot of different agricultural areas and there was concerns that it wasn't just the chain through um, port facilities but its other, its other, its other com competitive um, powers in the market that added to the bulk terminal um, work of, the, uh, of Grain Corp. If you added them together there was a potential, a potential for a reduction in competition and so that's what the Treasurer made a decision on on the balance of uh, the evidence before him. But what is that decision based on? Because the ACCC signed off on this. They uh, said that those concerns about competition uh, were not significant. Well the Treasurer took um, a view beyond the ACCC and that's his his job. So he, he talked to the stakeholders, he talked to the corporate sector, he talked to the wider uh, the wider rural community and uh, there was a lot of concern and there is a lot of uh, reform going on in the grains industry and I think on balance uh, he came to a decision based on um, good evidence. You, but, well, uh, I mean what evidence is it because the ACCC, the ACCC did tick off on this so uh, there might be concerns out there but isn't it his job to explain why this could be good, why more investment in Grain Corp could actually help the agricultural industry? Well uh, and indeed he has permitted a raising of the threshold that ADM now would be subject to in terms of Grain Corp so they can raise it from 19% to now just short of 25%. So that, that, that is a, a, an, a, an ability for them to put more equity into Grain Corp. If they, they're, they're um, committed to the long term future of uh, Grain Corp, um, uh, they have an opportunity to show that um, in, in, in increasing their equity holdings in that company. Michelle Rowland, uh, should this deal have gone ahead and if so what conditions should have been placed on it? Look firstly I'd like to say you, know, you set, stated earlier you know, the, the opening statement on election night from Tony Abbott was we're open for business. Well obviously we're not. Uh, and the Labor Party has taken a view and it's quite contrary to the Liberal Party's view which is supposed to be about free and open markets that we support them. We support free and open markets but I guess we shouldn't be surprised because even last year we had an opportunity uh, to deregulate uh, the wheat uh, market in Australia. Labor voted for it and the Liberals voted against it. But even putting that to one side, look I think that more information needs to be provided uh, from the Treasurer about what inputs went into this decision because as you say clearance was given by the ACCC. Um, in my former life um, in trade practices uh, law I worked with a lot of people who were involved in this and clearance from the ACCC um, whilst it wasn't definitive guidance about the way in which a FERB decision would be issued it certainly provided um, good indicators. So I would very much like to see the reasoning that went into this, um, full, and full reasonings um, from uh, the Treasurer because quite frankly you talk about you know, lessening competition well competition is there to protect 
and serve competition, not competitors. And we actually haven't seen any evidence of other competition that would have arisen, but at the same time we've seen capital, significant capital investment foregone. Every CEO in Australia is now sitting in his or her offices scratching their heads, okay, wondering well, the, what's next. The door was left open according to the Treasurer, so uh, given that's the case, what conditions do you think should be placed on this deal? Would you, uh, are you giving it, I suppose, a tentative thumbs up? Well, look, Labor has always said we, are, we support free markets and you know, whilst, whilst we haven't seen you know, the full conditions or you know, the full reasoning um, that Joe Hockey has given, we have been very supportive of opportunities for foreign investment so that we can actually increase growth and productivity. Um, now we've, we'll never know. Now quite frankly we'll never know um, what, what could have been in this area. Reports that Archer Daniels Midland was still offering additional money into the investment just within the last 24 hours, does that tell you that they um, hadn't really gotten the offer together, that it was a bit last minute, that perhaps it wasn't all the benefits Look, that we I thought it was going to be? Indeed, I saw some of those reports and some analysts saying that, you know, criticising ADM for going in late, but at the same time, you can understand their frustration that this was taken to a highly politically charged level. Um, an internal conflict between the Nationals and Joe Hockey, who said he wouldn't be bullied, and they were actually offering something like over $200 million, I think it is, into the supply chain um, as additional investment. And again, that has just been completely foregone. Might move on to another foreign investment area. Peter Hendy, I'm interested in your thoughts on Qantas. Uh, thoughts yeah. about now, debate well, about whether or not... after hearing all that from Labor, can I just say, can I just say, I'd, I'd like to say, the yeah, ADM um, original FERB application was in May this year in 2013, right? Before the election, Wayne Swan as Treasurer had an ability to make a decision. Uh, Chris Bowen was Treasurer before the election. He could have made a decision on this. They squibbed it and now they're complaining about a decision being made. Well, we actually made a decision, so that was important. Yeah, on Qantas, you made a great decision. Uh, on Qantas, anyway. um, let me say, on Qantas, after hearing all that, um, I, I, you know, the consistency is interesting. Um, that's all I'm saying. I mean, yesterday we heard from the Leader of the Opposition that on Qantas, um, there's no way that he wants to see um, uh, a change in the ownership uh, rules of Qantas in terms of foreign versus domestic ownership. Now. What's happening with Qantas is that the Qantas um, executive and the Qantas board are raising issues about their, oh, well, their, their financing, about their debt, their ability to raise debt. Um, and Specifically what the against said Virgin this Australia week, as well, isn't it? And what, well, what the Treasurer said earlier this week is let's have an adult discussion about that issue. And so that's what he said. And, um, and so that's what we're doing. So the, there is, um, there is a, a need, I think a, a want across the whole of Australia that, that this icon, this Australian icon remains strong and so we'd like to see that happen and so there needs to be an adult discussion about ensuring that happens. Tony Abbott came out though with, on that same day yesterday and said he'd like to see it remain in, in Australian hands. So is that discussion, if the Prime Minister's uh, making his thoughts pretty clear, is that really open for discussion? Well, I, th I think that uh, what the Treasurer said was there needed to be an adult discussion about how we deal with Qantas's concerns about its ability to raise debt and finance its ongoing capital program. So that's a sensible thing to do. Um, I note that um, part of the, uh, that debate is that question about foreign ownership. When, when Qantas was privatised by the Labor-Keating government in 1993, one of the impositions it put on it, and that was agreed by Parliament, was that it had to be 51 per cent Australian-owned. Um, Alan Joyce, as the CEO of Qantas, said that he didn't think that that was something that would be changed anytime soon. Um, but the question that we're really looking at is uh, the ability of Qantas to stay as a strong uh, commercial entity in a competitive world um, and able to raise its debt and finance its ongoing capital purchases. Michelle Rowland, so that's, Qantas that's, is, an, that's a sensible thing. Qantas is, it seems, in some, some ongoing difficulty, I suppose, is one way to put it. What would you like to see? Uh, Government-backed debt, 10% buyback, relaxed foreign ownership? What area, what path do you favour? Well, firstly, can I just just start by um, you know, addressing some of the comments that were made there about you know, Labor being inconsistent and arguing that trying to argue that Labor squibbed it. Look, the decision's been made today. Joe Hockey squibbed it. Joe Hockey squibbed it. And if you want to talk about consistency, well, at least the Liberals have been consistent in opposing free markets at the end of last year when it came to wheat and now when it came to grain. Okay, but to but get on to well, Qantas... Well, on that point, I mean, they've made a decision today, so they're out there to be judged 
for better or Absolutely. for worse on it. So, Absolutely. But, but, but by saying that we want to see more detail on it, what, what would, I mean, we're going to hopefully speak to the, the shadow treasurer soon, but what would Labor do? What, what would be your definitive well, look, our, our view is that we welcome, we welcome free markets. And no, but we this, well, this, specific, this specific takeover, well, I'll though. Well, I'll wait for Chris Bowen to make comments on that specifically because, as we've, as we've said since the decision was made, more information needs to be on the table about the precise application that was made to FERB, the you, precise application. Okay, but you, I think the underlying principle, though, Tom, the underlying principle to answer your question is that when we say we're open for business, we do want Australia to be open for business and we welcome foreign investment. We welcome it. We don't have this internal fight with the National Party, unlike the Liberals have had, in order to reach what's a political conclusion. So that's that's our position on it. But to go to your issue about Qantas, look, there's no denying that the, you know, particularly the retail side of the aviation sector, has had heightened um, competition and heightened need for innovation in different sectors in recent years. And we know that this has come about, this um, argument has come about primarily because of Virgin's overseas capital raising. Now, if Qantas um, decides that it needs to to you know, get out in the public somehow and make a debate about it being a national carrier, then so be it. I too am very ready um, to have that debate. But the question needs to be, do we, does Australia want to have a national carrier? Does okay. Australia want to maintain those limits? And that's All what right. Labor supports. Well, the debate has been kick-started. We're going to have to take a quick break here on Lunchtime Agenda. Back after the break, we'll tackle the ongoing debate over the education reform. Stay with us. Four out of five adult dogs suffer gum disease. And dogs use their teeth like we use our hands. Pedigree Dentist Sticks reduces tartar and helps look after your dog's teeth. We put hay bales in all our pastures so our chickens can exercise. <laughs> it sure works for me. Lumidale, where the chicken comes first. This is an invitation to a new generation. This is an invitation from the all-in-one Xbox One. No matter if your dog or cat is big or small, the RSPCA knows how much you love them. That's why we offer pet insurance. It can reimburse up to 80% of eligible vet bills to a maximum of $11,000 per year. No additional excess when making a claim and the choice to use any vet licensed in Australia. And applying for cover is easy. So search RSPCA Pet Insurance to get covered now or call 1300 730 835. Lexus IS is everything. Life can't stop when aches, pains and strains occur. But when they do, you want a solution. Ultraleaf supports the body's natural healing process to help repair soft tissue damage. Ultraleaf, looking after your body for life. Available at these leading pharmacies and retailers. Life is a journey in which we're all travellers looking to make that great trip with someone. Journeys are made by the people you travel with.
Welcome back to Lunchtime Agenda. Here with me at the Sky News Centre is uh, Labor MP Michelle Rowland. In Canberra we have a Liberal MP Peter Hendy. Well, we do of course have today meetings with the education ministers, the state education ministers that is, and their federal counterpart Christopher Pine. The ministers were mainly seeking clarification on what's going to come of the education reforms. We know Gonski is essentially just that, Gonski. Well, what clarification did they get? Not much apparently. Have a listen. All in all, I think ministers are very disappointed with uh, 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 no greater clarity over what the Commonwealth is proposing. And at the end of the day, uh, we're, we're just ministers. Uh, the people who should be and will be most disappointed are the parents of the millions of children across schools in New South, uh, New South Wales and the rest of Australia uh, that are going to have now an increased period of uncertainty. As uh, far as Victoria is concerned, we uh, signed an agreement with the federal government. It was a state, uh, state agreement with the federal government. Uh, it wasn't a political agreement. Um, and uh, we expect that six-year agreement that we signed uh, to be honoured. Uh, there is now less certainty at lunchtime today than there was when we walked into this meeting this morning, and that is down to Christopher Pine's complete incapacity to offer any guarantees that satisfied these states. Peter Hender, we were promised a no surprises government under Tony Abbott. A few of those ministers sounded pretty surprised about the direction education's going in, though. Well, look, uh, well, what were they talking about? They were talking about a six-year agreement. We said before the election that we would match the Labor Party funding in the four years of the uh, forward estimates. Um, so they shouldn't be surprised. Um, it was very clear before the election that that's what we were saying. And that's what, that's what the Prime Minister and the Minister for Education have been saying in the last, uh, in the last week. Right, but if you look at what was said before the election, we're talking about a unity ticket when it comes to education, no daylight between the two major parties, this was said plenty of times. The reality is if you're a voter in Victoria, in New South Wales for example, in 2015 your school system is going to get less money. Well that's not, that's not I don't know where you get that from. The well, fact in is 2015 that we've, it's going to be the same amount of money spread between more states. So how can New South Wales or Victoria well, be getting the same said, amount of money they signed up to? Well, hang on. well the, the promise was, and it's very clear, that we would uh, match the Labor Party's funding uh, in the forward estimates for four years. And that's what we're doing. So they're not getting less uh, than they would have got under the Labor Party. So, and, so you're and saying... the other thing, of course... No, but you're no, saying... This you, is very, very important, is Labor... Um, uh, weighed in. Bill Shorten was actually the Minister for Education just before the election, a couple of weeks before the election, and actually cut $1.2 billion out of the forward estimates for education funding. I mean, you know, uh, he doesn't come to this with clean hands, old Bill. You're saying, though, in 2015, New South Wales will get the same amount of funding that they had, that they had signed up to that they'll get in 2014. There'll be no change in that, because the Minister no, didn't appear I... to say that today. Well, I didn't say that either. What I said was that we made a commitment before the election that we would match the Labor Party's forward estimates for four years, and that's what we'll do. But, but what the difference here is, I mean, if you're a voter in New South Wales, sure, the whole education system's getting the same amount of funding. If your state's not, then it's not really a unity ticket on education, is it? Well, I don't, I don't know where you're getting that from. I mean, I, don't, I didn't hear what, um, Christopher Pine say that. I mean, I, he's, he's repeated consistently, as has the Prime Minister, what we pledged before the election, and they've said that we will meet the commitments. Right, he did mention it was going to be a, a fair and national system. That's the implication. Anyway, we don't, you're right in that we don't know yet what's happening in 2015. Michelle Rowland, I'll move on to you. Um, Labor appears to have made at least a couple of tactical errors here. Uh, they announced some deals that weren't actually signed. That, that appears to have happened, in, for example, with Victoria. And could it have been more upfront about this $1.2 billion that came out when the other deals weren't reached with Queensland, Western Australia and Northern Territory? Because that appears to be something now that's, um, that's being used against Labor. So why weren't they upfront about that cut? Well, I, I don't quite accept the premise of what you're saying there because it was quite clear that we had a variety of states, including Liberal states, very prepared to come on board with the Gonski funding model. And secondly, as to the 1.2 billion, I think Chris Bowen has made it quite clear that that was money put aside, taken out of the forward estimates, put aside specifically for education, 
for when these other states actually did sign up. So I don't quite, I don't quite accept what you're saying there, the premise there. Even but at least politically, though, find... could that have been owned a bit better? Could it have been, uh, you know, an announcement made about why that was coming out? Look, I actually question whether that would have actually gained any traction or done anything, even if you did something different in that space when the announcements were made. And my reason for saying that is this, because quite rightly, as you say. The Liberals went to the last election saying there would be no difference between the two models. So actually getting down into the minutiae of explaining anything else was quite frankly neutralised. Any analyst will tell you that the issue of education as a vote changer was completely neutralised as a result of what is now plainly um, before the election a lie now, now, by this government. And the deals oh, that oh, weren't signed, on, that, I that mean, was... go ahead Peter Handy. <laughs> well, we are... We are keeping to our commitments. Um, we said that we didn't like the six-year funding arrangements and that we would stick to the four years that were in the forward estimates. We said that we would, we would look at the system because we had concerns about um, issues about uh, 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 the running of schools, um, the, the uh, centralisation of power in Canberra and all those sorts of issues. We said that we were going to look at those before the election. That was in our election policy. All these matters of difference with the Labor Party were actually stipulated and stated in black and white in our policy before the election. Well, look, quite frankly, voters went to the polls in Eden Monero, in Greenway, thinking there was no difference. Let's face it, New South Wales, one of the most strident critics we've seen today is Adrian Pickley saying that there's even you know, less clarity about what was there before and this is a betrayal. Like, how much more clearer can you get it? Okay, Quite frankly, I, these, these ministers went there thinking I, that there was going to be no difference. I will have to end it there. Michelle Rowland, thank you for your time. Thank you as well, Peter Hendy, for joining us. And thank you for watching. You. Stay with us. All the day's news.